kia ora katoa. I'm so thrilled to be getting this last video done for my challenge. Um, <clears throat> this is the fifth of five. Um, whoop whoop! And it's been incredibly challenging. Um, sticking to the timetable, finding the time each night to do this in amongst my day and getting used to seeing my mug on a phone and talking to it. It's It's been an amazing learning curve and just the experience itself is something that um, um, I, I'm really really grateful for. It's definitely pushed me outside of my comfort zone in so many ways. A huge component of business moving forward for me will be um, being able to speak on these kind of platforms and I've really procrastinated about getting that ball rolling because I was very um, hyper aware of sort of having to put myself out there in that way so really grateful for uh, this being the kick up the ass that I really needed to get the ball rolling. Um, this challenge was the most challenging for me and as soon as I heard what was involved I almost felt the sense of dread because I knew immediately the situation that I could use to um, fulfill this exercise um, and it's a conversation that I've been delaying because I really struggle with being open and upfront with somebody in that kind of way, um, particularly if it's somebody who is um, viewed as being, I guess, higher on the food chain. Like it wasn't um, me as a manager speaking to one of my employees, it was me as an employee having to give my employer um, some feedback about um, yeah, the way they were communicating with me. So as I've mentioned in other videos, I'm a nanny um, and I do it privately. I go into someone's home and I look after their child while they are in their home. They're just at the other end of the house in an office and me and their baby are in the lounge room, bedroom area and that's where we kind of hang out for the day. So it's not like I've got sole charge. They're very much still involved. They come in and out of the room that we're in which obviously can unsettle him sometimes and it's, you know, I guess the three of us together are kind of looking after him but I'm the primary caretaker so they can be in their office doing their meetings and that type of thing and I, I guess you know when you're dealing with someone who is um, giving you responsibility of their child it's completely different to somebody that you may be working for where you're selling a product like this is their baby this is their first baby as well so everybody's sort of um, a little bit paranoid I guess about doing the right thing and not really having that experience I've never nannied before so they really um, went out on a limb by offering me this opportunity and, and, and knew that I didn't have a lot of training around it I am totally auntie favorite though with all of my sister's kids I don't have any kids myself um, but have got lots of experience with little ones but never like in a professional capacity and I can appreciate that when you have someone coming in to look after your child, if you can hear them crying, um, it's difficult. Um, the other thing that sort of I really, you know, have, have, have taken on board, because I think I'm quite an empathetic person by nature, is that um, there's a serious lack of sleep going on in that household for the parents. They both work for a New York based company, even though they live here in Raglan, and they are having to get up really early in the morning to log on for their Zoom meetings each morning. So lack of sleep, um, both gone back straight back into full-time work again so really feeling quite I think bogged down by having to juggle professional life and family life again um, and doing it in an environment where they're not in an office they're doing it from home so there's been lots of extenuating factors that have contributed to what I needed to address today which is um, the communication I found that in some instances I'm perhaps being communication with me has been an opportunity to maybe vent frustration about other things that are going on because I am quite a gentle soul um, so I wouldn't go so far as to say you know taking bad moods out on me but there's certainly been like an abruptness and a um, uh, just being quite harsh sometimes with how things are communicated and, and it's because 
you know lack of sleep and all of that kind of stuff but because I've been hyper aware of all of that I've really procrastinated having this conversation this is such a long-winded way to say it but I can't really think of any way to sort of shorten it down so yesterday <clears throat> At nap time the preference is always for baby to sleep in his cot but it's really low cot and there has been sometimes um, uh, difficulty transferring him from me to the cot and I've you know had a couple of days in, in the last couple of months so it really doesn't happen very often where two or three attempts to get him into the cot have resulted in, in him completely waking up and after about the third try, I'm kind of like executive decision here. It's actually more important that he sleeps rather than where he sleeps. So I'm going to place him in the, place him on the bed, which is higher and easy to transfer him to. And then there's like a little barricade that's built around him with pillows and things like that. So he's safe and he's got a wee camera there, which I can watch him so he's not going to roll off the bed. Like it's not a safety issue. Um, but yeah, yesterday there was a lot of issues. I think he was overtired and the three times that I tried to put him in his cot, he woke up. So the fourth time that I actually did get him to sleep, I just put him on the bed. And when I went into work this morning, um, I was approached by one of the parents and they said, look, um, just really want to say that, you know, the priority is to get him in the cot and we really, and then listed off all of these reasons about why that was to be the case they know that I will always try to do that. So I kind of was very much an opportunity to just have a bit of a vent. So I just said, I'm really, really grateful for the opportunity that you guys have given me um, because I know that I haven't had experience in this area and that, um, you know, you've kind of gone out on a limb to have someone in your home with your, you know, your most treasured, possession or you know your most he's your, you know he's your baby um and the fact that you gave me that opportunity when there were other people that had lots of experience is something that I will always be extremely grateful for but at the same time you need to give me the leeway that I need to make decisions for him that are going to be in his best interest without having to disturb you and there were two or three times where I've tried to put him in his cot and he woke up. I made an executive decision that it was more important for him to sleep rather than where he was sleeping. And so I put him on the bed. But you know that 99.9% .9 of the time he gets put in the cot. And I understand all the reasons why you would like that to be. It is quite... A, um, disheartening to me that the one time that it happens you make a point of giving me some feedback around that when you know I always try my best to do it in the way that you like but because he's a small child and he's growing and changing things can't always be that scheduled but um you've given me some um, links on Google around different techniques for settling baby better and I'm really, really grateful for that. You also showed me how you've been trying to transfer him, so I'm going to try and implement those into what I'm doing if I ever have a day moving forward where he is hard to settle, and just really want to take this opportunity to thank you again um, for giving me this chance, because, um, yeah, I, I, I was completely... Um, unskilled or untrained in that area and I'm just really really glad to be here and love hanging out with you and your boy every day so it wasn't like praise on either end but it was an uplifting comment because I guess she doesn't work alongside of me in the same way a colleague would there wasn't really any kind of skill or activity that I could praise other than simply the fact that they are beautiful people and they've given me this wonderful opportunity and they you know are happy to work with me each day um but yeah it was terrifying she um burst into tears and said that she was really sorry she didn't mean to sort of give mixed messages in that way and she knows I do try my best but she hasn't had a lot of sleep in the last week and maybe could have um, 
didn't need to mention it because she knows that I do always try and do it that way. So it had a positive outcome, but it was incredibly awkward. We both ended up having a little bit of a tonguey. Um, and, you know, having to do this challenge kicked me into action because it is something that I've been ruminating about outside of work. Um, so irrespective of whether or not I get the scholarship, I just really want to thank um, Kahol for this opportunity. There have been some things in here that I do anyway, but this challenge, the eye gazing, those were things that were really, really hard. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much for giving me a different perspective on how I can approach my business on a day-to-day -day level and be successful in it. Um, but yeah, I'm just really, really grateful for the opportunity and this experience is just as positive as whatever outcome will be. Um, so on that note, um, thank you very, very much. Um, yeah, thank you.